It's the morning of my last day of riding in Morocco, so I decided to make the most of it by getting up early. The hotel owner asked me to park in the courtyard for a change, and so pushing the tenere through the hotel lobby reminds me of the tales and pictures of all those other travelers who parked their motorcycles in hotel receptions. Today's aim is to get to the ruins on the Atlantic coast, so let's hope I make it at least today. The traffic is clear, but I've developed a flat tire on the back, right outside a tower shop and motorcycle mechanics. What a coincidence. It is the first time I've ever had a flat tire on a motorcycle ever in all my riding years, and I hope that this will not delay me too much. The mechanic takes the wheel off first, and I carry it to the tire shop next door, where the inner tube is taken out, and the nail is removed. I'm surprised at its length, and the tire fitter gets to work. First he applies glue and pieces of old inner tubes and rubber to patch the hole. Then puts the tire into a press to ensure the patch holds and becomes one with the tire. And then puts the inner tube back into the tire and inflates it. The tire is then taken back to the mechanic who puts it back on the motorcycle. All in all, I pay the equivalent of £2.80 to get the tire fixed, but I'm so shocked by how cheap the repair is that in gratitude I feel compelled to pay both the mechanic and the tire fitter twice the amount they asked for. Back on the road, it seems like this hard shoulder is due for resurfacing. Unless someone is, of course, claiming this as their land as well. And there is always a moment to enjoy local food, even if it is only the local ice cream brand. The south of Morocco stretches into the Sahara, so I think I should take the opportunity to do some sort of desert riding there. The Sahara is the world's largest desert, and Berbers used to have their empires here, but today it is inhabited mainly by the Tuareg. Far from being arid, the Canary Current coming from the Atlantic brings in sufficient moisture to sustain plants and basic agriculture here. Iznit is a rather new town, founded only in 1881 to gain control over dissident Berber tribes and has a population of around 55,000 people. The town I am heading for is called Aglu Plage, located on the shore to the Atlantic. The distance to be covered to the ruins will not be possible due to the puncture delay this morning, but let's see how far I get. Aglu Plage is a seaside resort popular amongst tourists and property hunters. It is a pretty laid-back, relaxed and insignificant town, making it a perfect retreat from the mad rush of today's life. Tourism is its main industry. I guess due to my flat tire today, this is as far as I'll be going. There's something about the ocean and the seas that really make you contemplate and think about things. Just listening to the waves, very relaxing, but don't think too much. This beach still has lots of nice beautiful stones and I've collected some for friends and family back in Europe. The breakdown of my motorcycle in England made it impossible to ride the whole distance as time after getting the spare parts would be limited. Just like my time today is limited due to having to return the Tenere to Jewel Tours by 7.30. But one tries to do as much as possible and achieve at least some of the original aims. 
What remains is the good work and the memories of time spent with friends working for a good cause. It is time to head back, and rather than feel upset that I again did not reach historic ruins, I accept that there is only so much that one can see in the short time available. Better to have done a little bit than nothing at all. Finally along the roadside I found ruins. I don't know how old they are, but they look pretty old. Must have been somebody's house before and it's all got vegetation in it now. But despite the fact that nobody lives here since donkey's years, you've got the stones indicating that you're not allowed to enter. Imagine the person coming back now and seeing that a garden has grown inside his house. There's not much in the way of stone towers here in the back, which might have been the back room. So maybe we're allowed to enter. Uh, 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 spoilt it again. Another tower. No entry. Now rumor has it that the oldest standing mosque is in the United Arab Emirates and looks very similar to this one. Maybe this is supposed to be a replica? I don't know. Let's check it out. But a ruin finally as well. Uh, this seems to be the fence. Not very high. It seems like the economy version. I don't know. Maybe I should check it out. See what's inside. I don't know. It doesn't look too good. It doesn't look very welcoming. Not quite sure how old this really is. Well, it could actually be quite recent. But <laughs> it is in ruins, no matter how old it is. The history of Morocco is very rich with Amazigh and Arab influence. And who knows, maybe one day I'll come back and allow myself more time to explore the ruins and the history of Morocco. Our efforts, project and motorcycle ride were always going to be in support of UNICEF's Pakistan Flood Children's Appeal. Yes, we've managed to collect over £1,200. We are very grateful and thankful to all those who have supported us and donated. We've also received sponsorship from Maggie, John Blackman's partner, and she was actually the one who paid for the hire of the motorcycle. Maggie, thank you so much for your contribution, and John, especially to you too. For sure he was also with us all the way in spirit. John picked this flower in Box Hill just two days before he died, and with his fingerprints on it, and sand from the Emirates, our original target destination, and the sand of Morocco. Various elements of our project come together, and a bit of John stays here in Morocco. And to take back to John's grave back in England, I'm taking some sand from here. But what about the motorcycle I'm riding? All throughout the trip, its rugged, functional, dual-purpose character was proven to me, and its liquid-cooled, four-valve, four-stroke, single-cylinder engine was powerful enough to tackle every challenge. The 23-litre tank also reduced the need for looking for petrol stations and provided me with enough confidence to cover long distances in one go. The XZ Terror has also been an amazing motorcycle, and only thing that I would fault is maybe that the side stand is a bit too long. When you start it up, it is apparently vital that you let the clocks and the electrics do its work. And two, not just one, small side lights. I'm under a bit of time pressure again to get back to Agatir and to return the motorcycle to the tour company. And uh, I don't know what I'll do tomorrow. Maybe I'll just go hang around in town and see what uh, the town has to offer. It has been an amazing journey and the first time I rode a motorcycle in Africa. I learned much about the country and also learned a few words from the Moroccan accent such as the word Nishan for straight rather than Halatul as in common Arabic and also learned how elements of a foreign language like French can be incorporated into Arabic. Back at Jewel Tours I returned to Tenere and with the closing of the garage doors my riding in Morocco comes to a sad end but one accompanied by a sense of achievement. The next morning I take a taxi to the airport and before entering take a last look at the mountains of a magnificent country. Thank you so much Morocco for a wonderful time and an excellent adventure. The Agadir to Casablanca and back motorcycle charity ride was an extraordinary adventure much like the whole originally planned London to Dubai and London to Casablanca trip preparations. In this film we explored Morocco learning about its languages and history, economy, 
and geology and culture and cuisines. My Yamaha XT is fixed now and has a new front brake and I've recently purchased a Suzuki V-Strom for future adventures. We raised over a thousand pounds for UNICEF's Pakistan Flood Children's Appeal and also made many new friends. Back in the UK, Les and I pour sand from Morocco onto John's resting place so that he and the destination of our project become inseparable. While we may only have known John for 11 months, in our memory, he through his enthusiasm, encouragement and strength will stay with us forever. Bon voyage, au revoir, ciao, see you later. <laughs>